Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> Look at you. Don't wear yellow shoes. Stop nurturing people's careers. Be less emotional when you speak. Three statements I'll come back to that perfectly illustrate the incredible opportunity we have as leaders in any industry, but certainly this one. Let's take it as understood that diverse organizations aren't just better places to work, they actually work better. The data proves it. A 2017 McKinsey report on 1,000 publicly traded companies in 12 countries found that those in the top quartile for ethnic diversity in management were 33% more likely to outperform the industry average. Those in the same quartile for gender diversity, 21%. Companies with workforces and leadership teams that are diverse across gender and gender identity, ethnicity and culture have a competitive edge. And the dial is moving. Last year, Boston Consulting surveyed employees of more than 1,700 companies in eight countries and found that 75% of respondents said that diversity is gaining momentum in their organizations. But I'll offer that for all our awareness around the power of diversity and the data supporting it as a compelling business case, we're falling short in a key area. Here it is. Once diversity is within the organization, we fail to let it lead. We rein it in, we tamp it down, we measure it against the status quo because it looks different than what we believe leadership could and should look and sound like. But we call it diversity and inclusion, not diversity and representation for a good reason. And here's how that has played out in my world. Wonderful, well-meaning advisors, leaders, and mentors that I liked and admired then and still like and admire today told me my yellow shoes were one weird thing too many. <laughs> the subtext was that I was already a woman in technology and so I shouldn't stand out any more than I already did. The interest that I took in people's careers was too much. I cared about their children and their families and their doctor's appointments. Said differently, it verged on mothering. They said, let them carve their own path. That I should be less emotive and more concise when I speak. Read, my natural expressive tone was ineffective. Messages that I received subtly said, it might be better if you led with just a bit more conventionality, just a little bit more like the status quo, with a little less diversity. Coming up through my career, I moved into broader leadership roles, and as I did, I passed on this same guidance with my own good intentions. It took me some time, but I eventually realized that internalizing what these well-meaning advisors, leaders, and mentors were saying very unintentionally meant that I wasn't leading with diversity. And I had allowed it to happen. In that scenario, I believe, is happening across industries and companies of any size and any geography. That is where we are falling short. Here's the fix. Hire the right people for the right roles to do the right and challenging work and then let them lead through their own diverse lens. Here are the reasons that I believe in that so deeply. First, 
Businesses at every stage need different leaders and different kinds of leadership. A hectic, unpredictable startup environment needs someone accustomed to rolling up their sleeves, dealing with things on the fly, uncertainty and messes and mistakes and missteps. A mid-sized company planning their growth needs pragmatic leadership who take ingenuity out of benign process and give it to big issues where it will have the greatest impact. The enterprise that has legions of people across the globe needs globally minded leaders accustomed to embracing cultural differences as essential to growth. And what made a company successful today won't necessarily make it successful tomorrow. So why would we want to engage the same kind of leadership? Second, human beings are so beautifully complex and complicated. Who is to say one way of leading is the right way? How could we possibly be able to pinpoint with any real degree of accuracy what works? And let's also acknowledge that what we think works is through our own lens. Finally, and most critically, particularly at this gathering of thousands of people for a movement dedicated to diversity in technology, homogeneity smothers innovation and ambition, and people and organizations. Homogeneous feels easier. There's a built-in shorthand. People readily understand one another. Collaboration flows freely. We get the warm feeling that progress is being made. On the other hand, dealing with diversity and diverse points of view actually causes friction. It feels counterproductive. And that makes leaders feel uncomfortable. We worry that the progress we've been tasked to deliver is in fact in jeopardy. Collaboration won't be as rich and that the shorthand is deleted and people will fail to understand one another. But people with different backgrounds and experiences often see the same problem in different ways and they come up with different solutions, increasing the odds that one of those will be a hit. The biggest takeaway from the Boston Consulting Study Companies with above average diversity scores reported 45% of revenues came from products and services that did not exist three years prior. Nearly half of their revenue is driven by innovation. And let's step away from the data just for one moment and look closer to home for proof that different is better. Coffee for breakfast, sushi for lunch, pad thai for dinner. We all eat food that comes from a blending of cultures. Jazz, hip hop, rock. We all listen to music born of cultural fusion. Prosperous urban centers like New York and Dubai and London and even the one that we live in. What do they have in common? They're a kaleidoscope of culture. People with different backgrounds backgrounds and experiences will lead in different ways. Let them. They will light and stoke the fires of innovation and ambition. We see five stressors that are significantly changing the world of work. Disruptive technologies like big data and AI and machine learning are everywhere in organizations. That means that people are shifting toward knowledge-based roles and everyone is struggling to upskill and adapt. The competition for talent has gone global and that means that borders become non-existent and government legislation becomes more complex and companies are struggling to keep up. And lastly and finally, today for the first time in history, five generations of people are in the workforce with all different kinds of needs and motivations. Five technological, economical, and societal stressors that propel companies, teams, and leaders through seismic change 
at a pace that is the fastest it has ever been and the slowest it will ever be. Everyone is leading through change, whether in title, role, or spirit, whether within a team, a company, a community, or a family, and we've never seen more of it than we have right now. How can we possibly manage through this with homogeneity? We can't. We need to harness the full power of human potential, diverse human potential. Let diversity lead. Without inclusion, diversity is merely representation. And though we're sitting here at an event dedicated to technology, the truth is every company is a technology company. We must see diversity here in order to continue to see it everywhere. Every company must reflect the customers that they serve and the planet that we live on. People of all ages who think broadly and narrowly and differently, who identify on a spectrum of gender and ability, who are shaped by their culture and their experience. Today, tomorrow, be mindful of advice that advocates for the status quo. Wary of coaching that breeds conformity, cautious of mentoring that forces the diverse to shoulder diversity. And ask yourself, what's the status quo that you're following? What conventional advice are you passing on? Who we are, our lives and perspectives and experiences is a unique contribution we make every single day by simply being who we are. Show up, wear your yellow shoes, and celebrate others who show up in theirs. Let diversity lead. And then give it the greatest gift that you can. Believe unwaveringly in its power and push it to thrive. Thank you.